The math class in Java is a commonly used class that allows a user to do some kind of mathematical operation to get a desired result. And in this case, we want to look at two of those operations or two of those methods called max and min. And in this example, we've used both of them to find the maximum and minimum of the two values being passed to math.max and math.min. In the first case, we're looking for the maximum and we're using math.max. And so we have 50 and 100. So when we run the program, we would get 100 because that's the greater value of the two. And in the second case, we're using math.min and the minimum value would be 50. And so it would return 50 to the program. So we get an output of 100 and then on the next line, 50. Let's say that I was trying to change this up on you and instead of finding the maximum of two values, I wanna find the maximum of three values. I've laid out three values here, num1, num2, and num3, 150 and 150. And then I'm creating a value called max, which is going to store the maximum of num1 and num2 and then print out max. You can see the problem here is that it doesn't compare the third value. So one might think, well, why don't I just add an extra value? I'm going to add a num3. So now I'm comparing num1, num2, and num3. If I were to run this program right now, I would not get 150, I would get an error. And the reason is, is that you cannot just change a method's parameters. You have to use the parameters that the creator or the programmer has decided to give the method. And the programmer or creator of the max method only allows for two values to be taken in. And so if we take away that third value, we still have the original problem. We're only comparing two values and we would only get 100. How could we compare three values instead of just two? Well, what we could do is use a two-step process. On the first line, we're going to find the maximum value of the first two numbers, num1 and num2. And then on the next line, we're going to compare the third number. And I've intentionally left the second parameter blank because what would go there? Well, what do we want to go there? We want the maximum of the first two numbers to go there. And we've already figured that out on this line. So what we could put right here is the value max. And now what we're comparing is, here I'm comparing the first two values, storing it here. So max would be, in this case, 100. And then I'm comparing 100 to num3, which is 150. So if I was to print this out now, I would get 150, which is the correct result. And I have accomplished my task of finding the maximum value. Now what if I wanted to do this on one line instead of using a two line process? Well, what we can do is we can put a method inside of another method and let's see how this would work. I'm going to remove the second line and I'm going to put a math.max method inside of another math.max method. And so now we see we have max equals math.max parentheses and the first parameter of math.max is another method and this is completely legal inside of Java. And what it's going to do is the same concept as before. It is going to find the maximum of the first two values. And then over here, I've left the second parameter blank. Well, what would go there? The other value that we wanna compare. So this would compare the first two values return 100, and then that 100 would be compared with the third value, which is 150. And then when we were to run the program, it would give us 150, which would be the correct result. The reason I showed you this is to show you that methods can be placed inside of other methods, and this is called nesting. What if I change the task? Instead of just finding the max, I also wanted to find the min. I could do this also on one line, and I could nest the min method inside of this other min method. So the first parameter is going to find the minimum of num1 and num2, which would be num2, which is 50, and then compare that to 150. So 50 compared to 150, the minimum would be stored as 50. And then if I wanted to print it out, I would just add another system out print line, and the output would look like this. 150 and then on the next line 50. Now we saw in the last example that sometimes the flexibility that we want is not readily available to us like comparing three values to find the maximum. 
But we found that there's another way around that, putting one method inside of another method. Well, the math class and other methods, sometimes the creator wants to provide flexibility, and that's exactly what they've done here. And when we run the program, you might see the flexibility. Look at 150 and then 100.67 and 50.0. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is that these are comparing two integer values, and these two are comparing double values. You'll see that the 50 here, although it looks like an integer, is being treated as a double because the point zero is being added at the end. And so while these look like the same method, they're actually two separate methods, two max methods and two min methods. And when we do this, we say that a method is overloaded, meaning that it can have the same name, but the parameters can do something different inside the program. So the creator or the programmer wanted to create that flexibility for us. Therefore, they overloaded the method. The math class has several methods inside of it, and the two that we focused on in this video are the max and min method. And the max method of the math class finds the maximum of two numbers, whereas the min method finds the minimum of two numbers. Methods can only be used the way the creator or programmer intended, even though it would be nice to add a third parameter and find the maximum of three values. We can't do that because that's outside of the scope of what this method can do. Now, if the creator of the method decided to create another method named max, he could do that with three parameters, but the same thing can be accomplished by placing one method inside of another method. And we saw how to do this, and this is called nesting. So methods can be used inside of other methods. And lastly, methods can be overloaded, meaning although a method has the same name, as is the case of the last slide, where we looked at max and max and min and min, where they look like they're exactly the same method, where they're truly different because one is taking in two integer values and the other is taking in two real numbers. And if you look at the math class's API, you can see all of the different variations of the different methods inside of the class, which we'll be doing in another video. Max and min are important tools inside of the math class, and they demonstrate important parts of what methods can and cannot do, and how flexibility can be added into them.